good song, right? I can't help myself. Makes me want to dance. Welcome to Las Vegas. All you guys over there, move over here. We got plenty of seats on this side of the house. How are you today? Welcome to NAMA Show 2019 in lovely Las Vegas. I love this time of year. And I love this occasion. I don't love the allergies right now in Las Vegas, but I do love this occasion because I get to come before so many of you and talk about what's been happening, certainly at NAMA, but more importantly, all the things we're doing together to move the industry forward. And so I call that my little state of the union. And I'll get to that in a minute, but I wanna, I wanna start today a little bit differently. I wanna ask a question. What if, I do that a lot, ask my staff. But what if, it, it's a simple and bold, powerful query. So I say, what if, starting today, we as a convenience services industry, works together to aim even higher, to be even more ambitious than we already are, and to collectively challenge ourselves to achieve goals that are bigger than ourselves. Now, probably a lot of people would say, well, that's what we already do. That's why we're part of NAMA. We're part of a group. Well, what if we aspire to something a little bit different? The thing that Benjamin Franklin first professed so eloquently, the term doing well by doing good. Doing well by doing good. The, that, the idea of doing good for our customers and the broader public, I have to tell you, is really critical at this time. Change is happening at a breakneck pace. Consumption patterns are shifting. Customers' needs and desires are transforming. All of this is our sort of magnitude forces pushing and pulling at us. And staying relevant means meeting, anticipating first, and then meeting those demands head on. And it's, it's daunting. It's daunting. It requires you to change how you do what you do. NAMA's goal as an organization hasn't ever changed. It doesn't waver. We're here to empower your business growth by providing visionary leadership around things like this while providing you also with the practical solutions on how to lead in the face of such change. So with that in mind, I want to I want to let you know some important some important work that we're currently or uh, we currently have underway. It's related to the industry's long-term and long-standing commitment to improving public health. NEMA was way ahead of the curve back in 2005 when we, we created FitPick, which is a nutrition labeling program. Some would say we were too far ahead of the curve. But time has changed. Things have caught up. And now we are stretching even further. And we're being driven by sort of two major forces. The first is consumers, of course. More than ever, ever before, people are on the hunt for healthier food and beverage options, whether they're at home or on the go or on premise at work. Evidence of this is everywhere. And it presents us with enormous opportunity. Finally, demand and sales are converging might actually make some money on that stuff, right? As the convenience services industry, we want to be viewed as a solution provider for both the clients you serve and their customers, the very people who are on the hunt for these different healthier options, being part of the solution. And, and I know you know this. Many of you are already in this game, serving up a lot of new and different things. And I say, as an industry, we can and should do more because there's a business case for it. Demand and sales are converging. The second force that's coming at us, I'll call this a headwind. The other one was a tailwind. I'll call this one a headwind. <clears throat> it's a challenging public policy environment from our friends in the government at all levels. We face significant growing pressure from these entities as well as private sector organizations and health advocates who favor burdensome legislation and regulations and have the money to help drive it, and they're trying to force the changes that they seek. As you can imagine and as you well know, these changes have a negative impact on our industry because they're, they're being dictated by someone else. 
So in light of these realities, both challenges and opportunities, we believe it is the right time to demonstrate that our industry is a part of the solution in promoting public health and in meeting consumer demand while also protecting our businesses and enabling them to grow on our terms. So that's why a special task force of NAMA board members and outside experts have dedicated over a year to formulating a public health commitment by our industry. Self-led, voluntary, this program will keep pace with consumer demand and preference by increasing the availability of healthier products offered by our channel writ large. The ultimate aim is growing your business, first and foremost, through sales and customer satisfaction, while also protecting your business by improving the perception with government, our most vocal critics, and the general public. It's a big public policy play that will be noticed and it will be scrutinized over time in terms of how well we live up to these public commitments we're making. There's a lot at stake, and we have to get it right, because people will be watching. But bold strategies that cause all ships to rise are the kind of things that help the industry and your individual businesses to thrive. So I want to assure you that we're working very hard to make sure that the design of this commitment is meaningful and measurable for those who will be watching us, and most of all, business tenable for you. If you do well by doing good, we all do well. So anyway, enough about that. I'll, I'll just say to stay tuned. We're going to have more information coming to you in the, in, the, in the coming months, but we hope you'll consider being a part of this effort. So now, on to a little bit more traditional territory. Um, I'm going to give you a few highlights from the NAMA State of the Union. And I'm going to just focus on three areas today in the time I have. So the first is how we give voice to your concerns with government. The real ground game <clears throat> has been happening at the state and local level as Washington continues to be gridlocked and partisan wrangling. Um, so I'll give you a snapshot of outcomes of, from 2018 in all three channels in which we primarily operate. In Maryland, Michigan, Georgia, and Wisconsin, NAMA worked actively with state councils to protect members uh, from micromarket over-regulation and high fees. Those, so those four states that I cited are the, are the models so far. And these efforts will save operators, who are operating in those states, obviously, several hundred dollars per market location annually. So when you put that all together, that's more than $800,000 a year. And we didn't stop there. We're working to replicate the language or the regulations um, in other states where it's beginning to crop up. So building success upon success. In California, NAMA supported efforts to oppose Prop 65, which would require warning labels on coffee. I'm like, what, really? Warning label? Anyway, um, <laughs> NAMA board member Tom Stuber and I teamed up to write an op-ed that ran in Investors Business Daily, which is a very well-known national publication. And then there were other news outlets throughout the country, so we're getting out the word there, while advocates testified on the industry's behalf in the state legislature. So while the outcome's still pending, um, the government agreed with our recommendation that these warning labels were not necessary, and we expect, we expect a win for the OCS channel uh, on this front. And then lastly, turning to vending. In Louisiana, NAMA worked with state council and blind vendors to defeat unfair sales restrictions in vending. And we accomplished this uh, through a Taste of Fit Pick event at the Louisiana State Capitol where we invited government elected officials in to taste what we were offering and gain a new appreciation of the value and diversity of products that our industry offers. So we were successful in walking back that executive order. So that's a, that's a quick roundup of the states. Let me turn quickly to the federal level where we saw some advocacy gains with an even broader impact. We're making real progress in delivering fair Energy Star specifications for vending machine manufacturers. 
Um, this will protect the industry, at the same time, advancing energy conservation. So it's a do well, do good, win-win, all around effort in sustainability. We are actively shaping an amendment to the federal food code that will more clearly define micromarkets. This, would cha this, this change would standardize the requirements across all states, protecting operators from that sort of whack-a-mole uh, uh, situation I was describing to you with those four states uh, where we've already had intervention, and create consistent regulation, federal preemption. And lastly, I'm happy to report that the FDA agreed with NAMA's recommendation for the font size on front of pack calorie disclosure. So all you product manufacturers out there, we, fi we finally got agreement from the FDA on that. And it sets the step, right? Finally. And it sets the stage for final government approval and significant savings for both operators and our very valued suppliers. So um, the government is never, uh, you know, their interest is never ending, um, but we're, we, uh, we stay on the front foot for you and our action is never ending. That's the takeaway. So fueling all of this work um, was a major economic impact study funded by the NAMA Foundation. If you haven't seen it, I encourage you to take a look. It was uh, unveiled at the fly-in in 2018. And by the way, thank you to the 300 or so of you who were in Washington. And I hope more of you will come this July to join us in this great annual endeavor. That great study, that great new and groundbreaking study, helped us tell a stronger story about our industry and just how far-reaching its impacts are in terms of jobs created, taxes paid, and a whole lot more. You've heard us talk quite a bit about the $25 billion industry that represents the convenience services market, right? But I'm guessing you already know that we also generate $3.5 billion in taxes and $7.2 billion in wages. That's significant. And that's important. And that information is the kind of thing that equips us to tell your story and fight your battles on Capitol Hill. The second area I'd like to highlight is public outreach. So going beyond just government to the broader public, we unveiled two tools in 2018 that are paying some dividends, a new video and a brand new website, namanow.org. Since its debut um, on, right here on this stage last year, the This Is Convenient Services video has helped to reshape the image of our industry through emotionally compelling storytelling. And so how did, how did that happen? Well, it's really two ways, one of which involves you. Many of our member companies are using the video in, in, in their communications and on their client, in their client proposals, and it's proving to be really effective in demonstrating new and different distinct value to customers and prospects. So thank you for that, and keep up the good work. The second is the video is now front and center on our new website, so anyone who comes there to learn more about us sees it. It has succeeded in showcasing to a much broader audience just the really integral role that convenience services plays in consumers' everyday lives, and with our fantastic new website, if I say so myself, um, as its backdrop. The third area to highlight from 2018 is education. To better equip you with the knowledge you need we did a comprehensive update of our education portfolio, and we're still working on bits of it, but much of it um, was done last year. And our new Knowledge Center has employee training programs and uh, a bunch of cached, timely topic webinars, just a whole host of resources that are specifically designed for our industry and your business. And again, all of this is available on the new NAMA website. So that's a, that's a lot, that's a mouthful, right? For one year in 2018. And, and I'm always thrilled to be able to tell you how far we've come together. I mean, but I'm even more excited about what we're gonna do in the future. So take a look at the show floor when you get out there today and you're gonna spot a lot of the emerging trends that I've been talking about right here, right now. The future's here. So for one thing, the Better For You Pavilion is completely sold out. That tells me we're pretty well positioned to meet those changing consumer demands around public health and nutrition. 
Of course, technology is always an attention grabber, and this year it's even more impressive than ever. Artificial intelligence, new unattended retail solutions, predictive analytics, they're all right here, and they're all being uh, shown to you right here in our exhibit hall. I am always amazed at the innovative things that you guys do to keep evolving and growing your businesses. Yeah, so don't be surprised if you find me out on the floor bumping around in the virtual reality goggles, right? Or figuring out what is the latest and, might I say, least likely thing to be dispensed from a vending machine. I love it. Convenience services is whatever we define it to be. And I encourage you to keep breaking the mold. So I started my comments today focusing on the concept of doing well by doing good. And in this vein, I have, to, I have to say, I admire so many of you who step up and do these big things all the time, the things that really matter, like donating water and supplies in the wake of natural disasters and providing meals for children in need, funding scholarships, career counseling, you know, charitable fun runs, whatever it is. You, you've made all these efforts on your own without ceremony, and you deserve recognition and thanks from the industry and from the public. We have a great industry. Thank you. Thank you. We do. Well done. So I, I challenge all of you now to take another look at your businesses and see how you might do more. How you might do more well by doing good. Whether it's for your community, your region, your industry, or by joining us in our efforts to improve public health. I really believe that being part of something bigger than ourselves gives us shared passion and it strengthens the ties that bind. In closing, I want to thank all of you for your expertise, your passion, your innovation, your commitment, and of course your membership in this great organization. You are an Emma, and we're better for it. Thank you so much. <laughs>